Today is Monday, the 12th of October, 2009. And this is the start of an interview with Mr. Weil at the RSVP offices of Catholic Services of Macomb, located at 15945 Canal Road, Clinton Township, Michigan. Mr. Weil is 83 years old. His date of birth is April the 11th, 1926. He resides at 23238 Clarewood in St. Clair Shores, Michigan. My name is Sylvia Kaminsky. I will be the interviewer, and Paul Wilhelm will be the videographer. Mr. Weil, would you please state for the record the branch of service that you were in? Some people debate. I always tell them it was the United States Army Air Corps. Okay. And they said, no, it's Army Air Force. Mm -hmm. I said, that's not what I understood when I was told what I was in. Okay. But uh, I'll take either one. I we'll put both down. Both down. Okay. Um, tell us a little bit about yourself, where you were born and, and your family. I was born in, born in Toledo, Ohio, mm -hmm. uh, in Robinwood Hospital on Robinwood Avenue in Toledo. Okay. Uh, it was uh, 8 a.m. on Sunday morning, and I've been getting up at that time ever since, uh, it seems. the uh, I was an only child. Okay. And uh, had lots of doting, doting relatives that all wanted to keep me overnight for some reason or other. I don't know why. I don't remember back then. Okay. Uh, well, you're probably very cute, do you think? No, from the pictures I've seen, I wasn't at all. Oh. Uh, well, then things have gotten better, definitely. Well, okay. I, I'm not sure about that. <laughs> um, you, you said you believe you were in the Air Force, Air Corps, whatever they told you to say. Okay. And how did you join? How did you get in there? I really do? don't know. Okay, did you uh, I think it was probably uh, just the luck of the Irish, which I'm not, uh, but uh, I was, I enlisted actually on March 29th of 1944 and was told I would be called to active duty sometime mm -hmm. after I graduated from high school. Okay. And. Uh, when I arrived home from our commencement exercises, which were not very fancy in those days, uh, my dad says, son, sit down, I want to talk to you. And I said, oh, my dad hardly ever said that to me. And uh, he said, I have your special orders. Uh, he said, you're, you're leaving in 10 days. I said, oh, OK. So 10 days after graduation, I was in uniform. Yeah. At Fort Benjamin Harrison, Indiana, and um, we went through all of the procedures and stuff, tests, physical, mental, and so forth, and mm -hmm. uh, they got to, Buzzy was his name, the guy that was handing out shoes, and he says, oh, we don't have your size. And I said, okay. He said, we'll have to wait, and uh, just wear your civvies, don't turn they don't send those home. And I said, okay. So uh, I spent 19 days in the reception center until they received size 13 triple A. They had double A. And he gave me, he said, I, I can't give you and send you away with the wrong size shoes. You'll have to wait. So I waited and uh, had lots of special privileges because I was sitting around waiting and uh, they gave me a special armband to wear in, uh, in barracks, day room number three, and it was, uh, I have a picture of it, uh, me wearing it. It was, it was cut from the old tabletop of a pool table, which was green, and it had one paper clip on the top and one paper clip on the bottom to hold it on, and that allowed me to go into the mess hall anytime I wanted to eat. And uh, I could take the new recruits, the dummies that were coming in, and take them to the various processing centers and so forth. And uh, 
give them a little closer order drill because I had gone through that in the Civil Air Patrol before and in Toledo. And uh, it was it was great. And all of a sudden I got the word, hey, we finally got your shoes in. And you so pack up, you're leaving tomorrow. And so that I think is all the reason why I got assigned to the Air Force, which I'd asked for all the way along. Because the other guy, I don't have any idea where the rest of the guys went. Okay. But I think my being held back allowed somebody in Washington to decide, hey, we need umpteen thousand people in the Air Corps now, so send all those guys there. And that's where I went, okay. out to Buckley Field, outside Denver, where we had our basic training. Okay. Next question. When, well, what was the basic training like? Oh, you know, I was trying, I mean, after you had saw that question, I was trying to remember all of it. Um, I never was a Boy Scout, but I, I can guess that it probably was, seemed to me sort of like scout training. Mm -hmm. We camped out for uh, a few days, slept in a little uh, two-man tent, uh, bivouac we call it, and uh, uh, we had classes outside where we learned how to field strip uh, the 45 caliber and uh, the 50 caliber machine guns because that's what we used in the Air Corps. Uh, it, was, it was an interesting adventure. Uh, I enjoyed it very much. Uh, we sang all the time when we marched uh, from one place to another, from one class room to another, and uh, Bill Erdenberger and I were uh, co-song leaders uh, for our flight, and, and uh, it was a great adventure. And, and had you ever been away from home before? Only uh, a week at a time for some uh, church uh, okay. summer conference okay. camps, otherwise I'd never been away. And during your basic training, how was your instructor? Your drill instructor. We never considered him a drill instructor. He was just a guy that took us to the next class, from, to one classroom, or most of our classrooms were just outside, sitting in the uh, semi-desert oh. sand outside uh, Denver. And, uh, if it rained, we went back to barracks. We, <laughs> our, uh, <laughs> I don't know what you call him. He was a guy that, that took us around, and, and he didn't want to get wet, I guess. So we went back to the to the barracks. Okay. Was there anything significant you remember about your fellow soldiers? No, not there. Not until uh, I got assigned to my uh, permanent base. Uh, then there were some really neat guys, which I kept in contact with for a few years after we got out. But, okay. uh, Otherwise, nothing significant. What, uh, tell, tell us something about the assignment that you were trained for. What were you trained to do? Um, I went from Buckley Field over to Lowry Field, which was closer to downtown Denver, uh, actually on the city limits of Denver. Uh, I was trained to be a power turret and gun sight mechanic, mm -hmm. which is the MOS of 678. And um, I was school to be able to uh, repair the gun turrets on the on our bombers okay. and uh, that's what I did out to when I finally got assigned to Walla Walla Army Airfield uh, just outside Walla Walla Washington in the southeast corner of the state uh, I spent uh, a little over nine months there working on B-24 bombers, uh, maintaining the turrets. Sounds like it was very important. Uh, well, it wasn't, <coughs> excuse me, it was an important job. Uh, yeah. uh, I guess, uh, I, I don't know, we just, I just did, as long as I took care of my, the ships were assigned to me at Hangar 3, um, I was free to do whatever I wanted to do. And uh, at Walla Walla, which happened to be in a uh, pea-growing area. Uh, 
in the canneries, they had two canneries in town, and uh, they were short of help because most of the guys were in the Army or Navy or something in the service. So um, they sent out word that uh, any of the GIs that wanted to could come work in the canneries and help can peas. So we thought, well, hey, uh, might as well do something for the war effort. We can go in and, and work in the pea cannery and get paid 82 and a half cents an hour for uh, helping can peas. And the other people that worked in the cannery were high school girls, usually. And it so happened that my little girlfriend was working at the same Libby, Neil and Libby Pea Cannery where I went to work. Um, so that was very nice. Uh, mm -hmm. It was enjoyable. What were the living conditions like when you were there? Where did you live? In, in Walla Walla? Mm -hmm. in, well, I lived on base, of course, okay. in the, in the, uh, there in the, the barracks. Standard. Mm -hmm. And uh, I had uh, the lower bunk, and this is when I got to really get close to a, a fellow airman, uh, Bob Adams. And uh, we managed to stay together from, uh, and it wasn't that kind of relationship, but mm -hmm. uh, it was very, very close. He was the same age uh, that I was. He was from Bristol, Connecticut. And we managed to stay together all the way uh, to uh, Ashia on Kyushu in Japan for Army's occupation. And we came home together, and he went off to Bristol, Connecticut, and I went back home to Toledo, Ohio. And I made one visit afterwards to uh, the East Coast to uh, see him and a couple of other buddies. And, but uh, go ahead, next question. Uh, so you, you did uh, serve in different countries? Well, yeah, again. but the, the main time was uh, was in uh, Walla Walla, Washington, at the, mm -hmm. at the air base there, and uh, I, <laughs> it's, it, we heard, that, hey, the war's over, okay, good, great, we'll be going home, and uh, I was out up on top of uh, one of the B-24s, and I don't remember which one anymore, and somebody came out, hey, Will, come on, you're going over to Japan. I said, what do you mean going to Japan? <laughs> Come on, get out off that plane. Come on, you got to get packed. And I said, well, the war's over. They don't want to send me overseas now. What, what in the world for? And uh, come on down. There's orders on the, the uh, bulletin board for you to get going. So I left my job and uh, got packed up. And Adams was home on, on furlough. So I went into the day room. And I don't know, he was a second lieutenant or first lieutenant was in charge of our squadron. And I said, hey, what about Adams? He's home. Can't you send a message to him so we can so we can go together? Because <laughs> I uh, we spent so much time messing around. We owned a car together uh, and stuff. But then he said, well, he says, I think when Adams comes back, he's going to go with you. So, and uh, George Greaves and, and uh, a couple other guys. We all ended up going together. Go ahead. Okay. Um, when I asked you about the living conditions, I didn't. I didn't mention food. What was the food like? Fine, fine, wonderful. Oh, we had good food. The only two bad meals I had. Uh, one of them, the spinach, was not washed properly, and it was very sandy. And if you've ever eaten sandy spinach, you know what that tastes like. And I love spinach. I, I couldn't eat the spinach. And there was one other soup that uh, the mess sergeant uh, really messed up, and it was over salt. I think it was two pounds of salt for each bowl of soup. Yeah, because, and I could not eat that. Otherwise, everything else was terrific. Okay. You want to hear about my best meal? Sure. Okay. No, I'm not. Uh, I swear they made. Swiss steak, and they piled them in the huge pans, and uh, went through the chow line, and I saw the pan that was almost empty, and I said, well, pile on some more potatoes, and the guy wanted to give me a big piece of the Swiss steak, and I said, no, all those scraps, 
that are all around you, all those little pieces and stuff, and all that good grief, dump those on. Come on, dump more on. Dump more on. And those were the most delicious scraps of Swiss steak and gravy with a huge pile of mashed potatoes. It was one of my outstanding meals that I had at Walla Walla. Boy, uh, pays to take chances, huh? Oh, wasn't any chance. No, so I, 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 just... I knew the scraps were going to be good because right. they they savored and cooked on all the juice from all the rest of the stuff. Okay. And uh, of course, it, many nights went in the back door of the mess hall and, and uh, made other things that I wanted to eat or like what? Oh, they, they, I didn't make it. I wasn't very good at it. But uh, one of the other guys made delicious omelets, and uh, so he fixed those. Of course, we did this all in the back door, we didn't put in the front door for any of this stuff. And uh, we'd take grapefruit back in the barracks and uh, melon, and I've got one of the spoons that I used for that that I have at home. I don't tell anybody I stole it, but I did. No. And, um, Turn off the tape. Turn off the tape so they don't hear that. Yeah, I've got the spoon at home still, and I use it every now and then. I remember the, the good times that I had with that spoon. Uh, come on, next okay. question. Um, did you see any combat? No. no. And I, I, and that's where I, I sometimes feel guilty, but I don't really. Uh, the, the most <laughs> combat or pushing and shoving that I saw was when the uh, camera film would come in at the PX and everybody would kind of, hey, I want to get something for my camera, I need something for my camera. Cause we like to take pictures around the base and, and the airplanes and all that stuff, which I have piles of, which is going to the Yankee Air Museum so that I can uh, park with them. <laughs> okay. Um, Tell us a little bit about some of the people in your unit um, that you remember, uh, what you did to entertain yourself, and uh, how you worked together and so forth. There wasn't an awful lot of work togetherness. Uh, the most togetherness uh, on, on the working was uh, when we take the BST or bomb service truck and hook it up to the trailer and uh, run out to the munitions dump, I guess you call it, where they would load up the practice bombs with 90 pounds of sand and 10 pounds of a little charge um, that would go off when they dropped the bombs on their practice runs um, at Walla Walla. And uh, we would have to load the 100 pound bombs uh, onto the trailer and then We'd uh, bring them back to the hangar and take them out and drop off the bombs at mm -hmm. the planes so we, they could load them up and take them off on their next uh, training flight. Okay. Um, but otherwise, um, there was no great uh, working, working together, together on, on anything. Um, we just, and I, I have no recollection at all of anybody that was in charge of me, uh, non-com or uh, officer, we had a job to do and, and we did it and when the job was done we either go into town, uh, go I could go to work at the Pecanery or uh, uh, go back in the barracks or go to the movie that night. Uh, and it was a very as far as I'm concerned, very loose uh, mm -hmm. as far as any control over me. Mm -hmm. And the same after I got in Japan. Go ahead. Okay. Um, and you uh, it said, did you make any close friends in your unit? But you've already said that well, you did. Yeah, there, yeah. Were, there were a few. Uh, uh, but um, otherwise, I spent a lot of time in town with uh, June, my little girlfriend there. And, uh, How long was she your girlfriend? Most of the time that I was in Walla Walla, yeah. um, okay. probably six, six, eight months of it. I didn't meet her right away. Okay. 
Um, we, did they have USO shows around? Oh yeah, could, yeah, yeah. yeah. We, we had uh, a number of those. And at one point, I was thinking of leaving what I was doing and then join up with the contact caravan. Yeah, I thought of that name of the year. Uh, was the name of the show that was traveling around, and uh, they needed a sound man. And uh, but I'm, I'm glad I didn't get transferred to that because if I would have tried to tell where I ended up, I probably would have had my my free ocean voyage uh, uh, cruise ship deal going over to Japan. When you say contract caravan, what? That was the name of the uh, oh of okay. the show. Oh, okay. All right. And what were, what were the shows like? I never really knew. What did they have? Entertainers or? Song and dance okay. kind of stuff. Um, there, ooh, I can't remember her name. Uh, very famous um, actress that came on one okay. show. Okay. Um, so you did have stars, supposedly, some kind of people that were performers. For oh, yeah. And, uh, uh, Arthur Godfrey came to Walla Walla. Uh, he flew his own C-47. Oh. And I was telling one of the guys, my friends, uh, yesterday that uh, he took off in the C-47 with his, part of his crew, and he circled around, he came back, and he buzzed the tower uh, at oh. Walla Walla, and everybody, <gasps> you know, he, Arthur Godfrey, be somebody that could get away with that. Other <laughs> people that wouldn't have gotten away with doing something like that. Okay. And and where were you when your? How did your service end? Were you there for? Uh, I mean, were you discharged? Uh, what? Yeah. Let's, let's go to Japan. Well, oh, you want? Okay. Let's go to Japan. Is that all right? Sure. You bet. Okay. Okay. Uh, because uh, that was. The, the boat ride, as we we'll call it, uh, over started out very interesting. Uh, we left from Portland, Oregon, on the maiden voyage of the uh, SS Marine Lynx. And it was a beautiful cruise down the Columbia River. And we went to bed because for some reason they put the Air Force people right up in the bow ship. And if you've ever been on the bow of a ship, uh, you have, uh, you can appreciate what an interesting ride it gives you. Anyhow, um, went to sleep and woke up in the morning. We had crossed the bar out of the Columbia River into the Pacific Ocean, and it was a quite a bouncy ride. And had breakfast down in the hold, uh, and that's all, and uh, got up and was, I went up and sat close to the bow because it was nice, you could see the water splashing and so forth, and uh, there was a lot of things splashing in a very big hurry. My whole breakfast splashed out all over everything, and the next three days, I didn't care whether I was alive or dead. Uh, it was absolutely miserable. But after that, hey, then we, some of us got our sea legs. Some of the crew members were too sick to work. Maiden voyage again. And new crew. And so they asked for volunteers. And my buddy Adams had his sea legs before I got mine. And so he volunteered to uh, work as a crew member on the ship. So that allowed him, and of course he invited me to eat with him at the special crew mess, mm -hmm. so I didn't have to mess around with the stuff in the, in the mess hall part, the regular GIs. And uh, I had good food then, and I kept all of it on in me <laughs> for the rest of the trip over. Uh, and uh, I played records uh, for the, to entertain the GIs and so forth, and uh, got a little special treatment on that. But uh, we arrived in Yokohama, Yokohama Harbor, uh, 
uh, it was the 23rd of December in 1945, and uh, we had Christmas uh, walking around uh, the Japanese area there at Shoami, and uh, then they sent us down to Kyushu and got down there uh, at the Shia Army Air Base. And they said, what do you want to do? I don't have any bombers now, and they need any of that stuff. And I said, well, uh, I, I'd like to work in the special service, and if I could, and they said, well, what can you do? And I said, well, I can show movies and stuff. I used to do that in high school. I can do that over here. So they said, okay, um, you can work in the PX, and then you can show movies. And so the uh, Japanese built a theater, and I got the projection booth all set up, and I had two old Bell and Howell projectors that I helped get reconditioned and so forth, and then we set them up, and I got, got the theater running, and I showed two movies every night, 6.30 and 8.30, and of course the GIs, they were just so excited because they, they had movies. I, again, I finally got an officer assigned to me because every time I needed something for the theater, I had to go to one of the places around on the base and say, hey, I need one of these widgets. And, oh, you got to get an officer assigned for it. I can't give it to you. And I look at him and I say, hey, you want to see a movie tonight? Oh, yeah, yeah. I said, okay, give me the widget because you give it to me now. Oh, yeah, okay, okay. So that I could get anything I wanted because I was the guy that showed the movies. Base. So I finally got an officer assigned to me, uh, but uh, it was it was wonderful. Really, there were so many really nice Japanese people that worked on the, on the base with us, and uh, it was a little over four months. Actually, out of, out of the states, about a little about five months mm -hmm. out of the States. But uh, we weren't allowed on the uh, seashore. The base was on was on this uh, that's the Chinese Chinese Sea, China Sea or something I was called because we were mm -hmm. just mm -hmm. very close to uh, to China. We weren't allowed anywhere near the, the water because of the mines. Mm -hmm minefields and nobody knew where, what, and why there were any mines around and they didn't want any GIs getting in trouble with that, so we couldn't, we couldn't go swimming. But uh, we had a, Adams got to be postmaster <laughs> and so that was a really neat job for him. And uh, again, Bill Holloway, the first lieutenant that was in charge of me, uh, never said yes or no on anything, just go ahead and keep the movies running. And I got a Jeep, uh, which again, went into the motor pool and said, I got to drive to town and get the film and get it out here. And I said, well, you want to use a Jeep? Yeah. Well, take, it, take that Jeep. Use it. And so that was my Jeep for all the time I was there. And uh, I went any place I wanted to go, went in town, and uh, I don't know. I just <laughs> just was kind of my own boss, uh, and I had the high rank of PFC at the time. And uh, <laughs> the rank didn't mean anything. I wanted to learn the movies, you know. Well, then you let me do it, so I did it. Gee, I wonder what it would have been like if you'd been a corporal. <laughs> well, I finally got. I finally made corporal. Uh, Bill Holloway put me. He said, "I'm going to put you in for sergeant," but they couldn't couldn't jump two grades then. So he said, all they let me give you was his car coat. That was, I don't remember what that was, a month. I never did get paid in Japan. Um, didn't need any money for anything. Uh, we had a building contractor that was our mess sergeant. And uh, he liked to eat, and he would commandeer 
good food and uh, never had a bad meal there. It's when I learned also how good peanut butter and jelly sandwiches are on whole wheat bread. Uh, I've never had it at home, but I, and I still love to eat it now, those sandwiches. Uh, I can tell you uh, another very, well, nice story, I guess. Uh, on our barracks, we were on the second floor in the barracks, and uh, there were old Japanese barracks, and we patched up and fixed up and made very special for us. And Adams and I had one part of the room, and I uh, can't remember the gunner is all I can remember. It was one of the guys that was on the other side of the room. Anyhow, every now and then, uh, down the second floor, and here, Yashiko, of our cleaning girls yelling, Babu, Babu, Babu. And you come dashing into the room and there was some other GI that I didn't know chasing her. And uh, <laughs> she would say, take care, take care. And I said, okay, come on in, Yashko, and throw the other guy out. And get away from her, let her alone. Um, a very nice little girl. I have no idea how old she was. Uh, we spent a lot of time sitting on, on the bunk looking at Life magazines. Um, back in those days, Life magazine had no advertising of any kind. You remember that, huh? And uh, we'd sit on the bed, and, and she was looking at all the pictures of people and everything and, and understanding things. And I was trying to teach her about these people, and how people did this and thus and so in, in, in America. So we, we got very well acquainted, and she trusted me, and uh, uh, because I always kept other people away, and she was very sad when I had to leave, uh, because she knew she had a, a safe place and uh, a nice guy that didn't mm -hmm. bother her in any way, and uh, was trying to help her learn a little bit of English and uh, things about America. So you made a friend. Made, made a friend yeah. there, and, and in our chapel, we had two very nice girls, uh, Aiko and Miyoko, and uh, one of them sang and one of them played the uh, little pump organ that we had. And uh, the two gals and I used to spend a lot of time out around the chapel uh, singing hymns, and of course they knew English because they'd been to uh, Christian Mission School in Japan, and uh, I, I used to think so many guys had so, such a terrible rough time, and, and I, I really enjoyed my visit to Japan, as I call it. Um, and so many other people had a terribly rough time, I know, and, uh, but it was. What an enjoyable experience for me that sometimes I felt guilty about a little bit. But, uh, well, obviously you you know. were a friend and people knew that. I mean, um, you know, they could sense that you were someone to be trusted. You said something once about being in uh, Japan at, in the city somewhere at Christmas time. Yeah, yeah. When you went into that, I mean, of course I know they, that that's not one of their <clears throat> holidays, but did you see any signs of Christmas or? Uh, no, I don't, re I don't recall uh, anything uh, special. I, I know they had uh, uh, what they call Paradise Alley, where all the geisha houses were down one road, and uh, uh, half a dozen of us guys walked down, what's all this? What are, what, what are all these things, and what are they doing? And uh, they're... Uh, I know I never, never told my mother and dad, but I mean, on, on Christmas afternoon, we, we walked down the street where the girls were all sitting out on the porches, waving to the guys walking by, and we all walked by to look at it. Kids, you know, <gasps> what is all this? What is all this? And, uh, it was an interesting experience. Yes. Uh, 
I don't know who's going to see this, but I mean, it, it's all true. And, and, Good. Yeah. Good. Okay. Anything else about Japan or? Okay. Um. Yeah, I, I. I went into town one time to get film. Uh, the Navy used to bring film over, and it would get to us down in uh, Kyushu. But um, one day, uh, I saw this kid. Uh, you look familiar. Hey, Art, Art Weiss. He was my chemistry partner at the Lewis High School. Uh, and here he is over in Japan. I hadn't seen him since graduation day, of course. Mm -hmm. And uh, Art's gone now, I found out in one of my class reunions. Uh, but we met, <laughs> met each other in Japan. And also on the boat, or ship, uh, SS Stetson, Stetson Victory that we were coming home on. Uh, we were at the dock, and uh, the Army band was down on the on the dock playing some music for us. And I looked down there and I thought, I recognize that drummer was playing snare drum. And I yelled down from the uh, railing, Dave, hey, Dave Wilson. Looked up and I waved and he says, Bob, what are you doing up there? I'm down here. <laughs> he and I played in the drum section of the Lowe's High School band for three years. And here's Dave Wilson standing down there playing drum in the, in the band. And I said, I'm going home, Dave. He says, Oh, I want to go. How long have you been here? I said, Well, just over four months. Oh, he says, I've been out here in the Pacific for 18 months. He says, how come you're going home first? I said, I don't know. He just said, I can go home. So I'm going home. Oh, it was real. You don't ask questions when you're going home. <laughs> and, no, and it's funny. I wanted to go home, of course. But I, I was invited to Yamada wedding, which was coming up the week after I was mm -hmm. to leave. And I had never been to a Japanese wedding before. And he was one of the neat guys that worked on our base as a Japanese civilian. And uh, I had been invited to his home. I ate with the, his family and friends. Uh, I think Adams was with me too that day. And uh, well, I learned how to use chopsticks. And surprising. There were some sea rations that were served to me on. Uh, at Yamada's house. I don't know how the family got a hold of our sea rations, but uh, they did. And uh, otherwise, all the rest of the meal was strictly Japanese. But uh, I went into a few Japanese uh, homes and uh, met the people. Who, again, the ones that I ran into were very nice. And I know, I know that many of the Japanese people did horrible things for our people and uh, they were captured and, and other people were, or they took over but uh, I missed all of that bad stuff mm -hmm. uh, I don't know why I don't know why I missed it I just just the way it we were fits just mm -hmm. the way things work out yeah. Tell us how your service ended. Well, okay, uh, we came back into um, uh, yeah some army place in, in uh, Seattle, and um, we spent a couple of days there, and we put on trains, and uh, I went to Camp Atterbury. And that's where Adams and I parted, and he went on to um, Connecticut. And I went to Camp Atterbury, Indiana, outside Indianapolis. And there, the uh, people said, well, you can have these things, other, other stuff of your equipment and clothing and stuff, you can throw in the pile out back. And uh, they, they said, we why don't you sign up for the reserve corps? And you can keep your rank and your serial number and all that kind of stuff. And it sounded kind of interesting. And uh, 
so I signed up for the uh, Army Reserve, or Air Corps Reserve, I don't know which one it was. And uh, then they said, okay, you're, you're free to leave. I think they bought me a ticket, a bus ticket, and I got home uh, from Indianapolis, up to Toledo. And it happened to be uh, Mother's Day when I arrived home. Mm -hmm. <laughs> So you celebrated getting home on Mother's Day, Yeah, huh? my, okay. my mother was rather pleased yes. that it happened that way. Okay. And, uh, I'm sure she was. I'm yeah, sure I'm, she was. I'm, I'm, I'm yeah. not sure she Were, were they expecting you then? The yeah, time? yeah, they, they, were... they, um, they, I had uh, sent word, called or something, that, that I okay. would probably be home on Sunday, which was on the 20th of May in 1946. I can remember those things. I'll be lucky to find where I parked the car outside if I leave here now, but uh, uh, maybe somebody can help me on that one. But, uh, okay, what's next? Okay, can you tell us a little bit about what happened after the military, your life? How did it go? Yeah. Did you, did you go to school, or what happened when you I, uh, I got home, of course, didn't have any job or anything, and uh, I, uh, somebody said, well, you can sign up for unemployment. Uh, because you got home and uh, you don't have any job. And I know. Okay, everybody else signed up for unemployment. I'll sign up for unemployment. And uh, so, what do you want? What are you going to do? This was in uh, May, June. And I said, Well, I want to see my old girlfriend. And Pee uh, Wee and I went out a few times and, and uh, hung out, hung out together. I guess you call it now. And. Uh, I want to go to school at GI Bill. So I signed up at the University of Toledo for under the GI Bill to go to school. And uh, I always liked to do things, make things, and all that kind of stuff. I said, well, engineering is good, and I like chemistry so much. So I said, well, I'm uh, assistant superintendent of the school of Toledo lived across the street from us, and uh, we talked a lot about school and engineering, chemical engineering and stuff, and I signed up for that. And um, it, it sounds unbelievable now, but I noticed when I signed up my papers at the university uh, that the first, sem first semester, uh, everything included was $140 for 18 hours. Of, of, of university oh. credit and uh, free books and, and so forth. That's great. And uh, <laughs> this past, uh, when was it? Uh, school year at uh, Oakland University for a special little granddaughter of mine. Uh, she needed some books and she didn't have the money for the books. And I went to the bookstore and got the books for her, and it was just over $500 for the books that she was going to need. <laughs> I thought, oh, I see. Uh, so I, I went uh, four years at the University of Toledo, um, changed from engineering into education because I always liked working with kids and, and uh, uh, thought it was would be a nice idea. And so mm -hmm. I majored in chemistry, got a Bachelor of Science uh, in education, mm -hmm. and uh, taught for one year. He don't want all this. That's getting out of whack. Yeah. What's next? Oh, no, because I was going to, and the next question was what did what you learned in military help you in your civilian career? I don't know, to get along with people, uh, okay. to work well with people, probably. Um, so the do what you're told, do what, oh. do what you agreed to do. Yeah. Uh, okay, and so how did your ex service experiences affect your life? That's a toughie. Well. Uh, 
I don't know, unless what I just kind of said, there are all kinds of people, there are a lot of people that okay. were in my barracks uh, at Walla Walla and uh, at a Shia that I said hello to and uh, was respectful mm -hmm. with, but never wanted to have anything to do with them mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, outside that. There were others that I was most happy to be with, and uh, uh, I, I guess learned that there were people from the top end to the bottom end of the scale, and you have to pick and choose what you want to be with and be like yourself. Yeah. Did you have any service-related injuries at all that you might still be dealing with? Nothing no. that I no. that I know of. Okay. Uh, I fell off the BST one day, but. Uh, <laughs> I didn't hurt myself that I know of. Okay. And are you active in any veterans organizations? I'm a member of the Yankee Air Force, the Yankee okay. Air Museum. Uh, mm -hmm. Other than that, uh, no. The Yankee Air Museum? Yeah. Oh. I will run airport. Really? Yeah, Can I'm anybody sure. go? See what's there or what, what is there? Well, unfortunately, our museum burned down oh. in 04. Uh, we were in the old uh, World War II um, hangar. It was all wood, and uh, of course it was. Uh, I'm not sure. Just flip it over. Flip it over. Just flip the tape over. Yeah. How do you get in again? <laughs> Not turning. Oh. Okay. Sorry. We're on. Okay. We're on. Uh, yeah. I lost what it. Uh, the uh, oh the, the Inky Air yeah. Museum. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, we we had uh, we have at the present time a B-17, a B-25, a C-47, and I never can remember the other one, which was not a military plane, uh, flying plane, uh, only four of them. The B-24s that were built out there, some almost 8,700 of them, there's not, not a one we can get a hold of in any place. And, uh, it's a shame. There's only one B-24 that's flying, and that's the Collins Foundation out of uh, the East Coast zone. I managed to uh, get into that plane a couple years ago, and it's surprising how much smaller some of the things are at the plane inside than they, what they used to be, mm -hmm. especially through the Bombay area, where I spent many trips going from the tail end of the plane up to the front end, and back and forth through the Bombay, and I had to go sideways through, <laughs> through it this last time I walked through it. I never had to go sideways before, <laughs> and I never had to kind of hang on as I walked through either. <laughs> but uh, it's mm -hmm. funny how things change. Mm -hmm. um, is there, the airplane, is there anything else you'd like to add about your experience or anything at all? Uh, no. I, I, uh, I think that it's a, a wonderful growing up experience for somebody today. Uh, I sure don't like what all is going on with the Afghanistan stuff and mm -hmm. Iraq stuff, and uh, I sure wouldn't want to go through it again. Uh, what I did personally uh, was, a, was a great experience for me personally. I wish it never had to be in the first place, of course. And uh, there's an awful lot of good people that are getting uh, mangled, in, which does not please me. Now, you said you had brought some, some 
pictures and things? Oh, I, I, somebody said that I, if you wanted to bring a few pictures of a few mm -hmm. things, you could. Yeah. And um, uh, I brought a couple of things. Okay. All of my stuff, uh, fortunately, uh, they didn't want at the Yankee Air Museum some of my things that I brought home. And I'm glad they didn't want it then because if they had taken it, it would be all gone. Mm -hmm. Because a few of the things that I did bring back and did put it in the museum are, are all gone. They all got burned up. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. But I've got everything. My, my uniforms are out there now. And uh, they didn't want them then, but they've got them now. And I've got a number of other things at home that I'm waiting to take that we're having to move from our quarters right now. And I'm not going to take anything. I saved all kinds of stuff, papers, all my orders from one from one station to another. Uh, I've got all that stuff, and it's all going to the museum. And, uh, all my photos, uh, for complete photo history of all, all of my uh, wow. stuff from beginning to end. That's wonderful. Uh, yeah. It's all going to go out there. All right, thank you very much. We appreciate your being here. And thank you. And it was very interesting. Thanks for being here. Yeah. If you forget where you put your car, I'll give you your ride home. Well, yeah. <laughs> well it's, it's over on the east. The car's outside somewhere. I climbed <laughs> okay. my way out. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. All right. Starting. To your right, in the upper right, that's a picture of? That's a picture of me. That's you. At, uh, in uh, Fort Benjamin Harrison, Indiana. Okay. In uh, June of 1944. All right. In my, my uniform and my special green armband that allowed me in the mess hall any time I wanted to go. And, uh, and uh, to the... Uh, Right of that one is the picture of the real rough, tough, angry looking uh, soldier. Because uh, I guess we were called soldiers, now we're called airmen. But uh, that was taken when I graduated from my power turret and gunsight mechanic school course at Lowry Field uh, outside Denver. And uh, oh, the picture at the bottom left is one of me in my uh, work jacket because it was cold out there on the flight line in, in Walla Walla and that was in front of the barracks door. I didn't, use, I didn't go in and out that door, that was the other entrance door. And the other picture on the lower right um, is me at my house at home when I was uh, all packed up, ready to go back after uh, a furlough one Christmas time. Okay. And uh, the uh, upper left-hand corner is me, uh, is me, bad English. Uh, anyhow, leaving the one of the B-24s with my little tool bag in my hand, Walla Walla, Washington. And uh, the one underneath it is strictly a publicity shot uh, sitting up on the hood of the Jeep that somebody pulled up at the front of the hangar number three. And over on the uh, right side is a picture of me with my car that I had out at Walla Walla that uh, I had a hard time selling when I left to go over to Japan, uh, because nobody had any cash on that night uh, to pay me the $140 that I wanted. So I finally gathered to get $140, so I signed off. Gee, it was a 1931 Chevrolet uh, coupe with a rumble seat and wire spoke wheels. Uh, the tires on the side, uh, didn't have any tread on the bottom part where it sits down into the well of the, uh, the fender, but it was real classy little car. Um, this 
Uh, photo on the left is the um, inside of our barracks. Uh, this was my room and Adam's room that we shared. Uh, the bedspread <laughs> on my, my bed with the uh, design on it came from the SS Marine Lynx that um, seemed to find its way into my barracks bag uh, when I left the uh, ship. The uh, building on the uh, top right is the old Japanese barracks at the Shia Army Air Base. And if you look very closely, you probably can't see it in this view. Uh, we had central heating. It was central to each room. We had, we had our own little stove in there that kept us warm. And the picture below it shows the little stove uh, that exhausted out the window. It was very classy. But it was, it was nice. And, and we enjoyed it. Uh, we had a lot of fun. Uh, the, we, we had our own hot water, which uh, we managed to heat on top of the stove in my helmet that I flattened the top of it so it wouldn't roll off the top when we put water in and stuff. Um, in, uh, at our field, we had uh, some gals that worked in the mess hall, and these were two of them. Uh, oh boy. Nagio was one of the prettier little Japanese girls that all of the guys were chasing around. But again, um, she felt safe with me and her buddy, and I had to get the pictures taken. And my buddy Adams and I, when we first got into the 5th Fighter Command, uh, we were assigned from one place to another until we finally settled down to the Shia. Uh, this was Nagio. Uh, I went in to her home, and she got all fixed up fancy in her fancy kimono, so we could have our pictures taken with her in her neat kimono. And this is the little gal, uh, Yashiko, that uh, used to always find refuge in, in my room when she was chased by the, by the other guys. And uh, you can see she's considerably shorter than I. And uh, this, this was the, about the day before that I left there. And, and, and she was very sad because she was losing a, an American friend. So those are the pictures that I, that I brought along. Very good. Thank you. Okay.